First, a quote. If all else perished and he remained, I should still continue to be. And if all else remained and he were annihilated, the universe would turn to a mighty stranger. I should not seem a part of it. End of quote. This is how, in Emily Bronte's Withering Hates, Katie characterizes her relation to Heathcliff and provides a succinct definition of the unconditional erotic love. There is an unmistakable dimension of terror at work here. Think about the ecstatic trance of Tristan and Isolde, ready to obliterate the entire social reality in their immersion into the night of deadly enjoyment. Now, I could go on here about erotic love because I sincerely think that in contrast to our youth, the youth of those who are already old here, when you know to fight for sexual freedom was experienced as liberating and even monogamous love was considered or dismissed as a bourgeois convention and so on. I think that today more and more love, simply passionate love, is emerging as something dangerous and precisely subversing. Think about how you are addressed in your everyday life by society, what society demands of you. It's basically a kind of slightly spiritual pseudo-Buddhist hedonism. Ideology is telling you, uh, uh, be faithful to yourself, realize your true potentials, uh, uh, and experiment with your life, try all different options, don't fixate yourself on a certain uh, stable identities, life is dynamic, fluid, and so on and so on. And I claim within this economy, not only is stable love, passionate love, emerging as an obstacle to your authentic development, but uh, even the crucial dimension of love is gradually disappearing. Uh, what is love? As Alain Badiou, our good friend who wasn't able to come here, put it in his wonderful book in praise of love, uh, there is always something traumatic, extremely violent in love. Love is a permanent emergency state. You fall in love. And it's crucial that in English and in French we use this expression, to fall in love. You lose control. <coughs> it's really, I claim, that love, the experience of passionate love, is the most elementary metaphysical experience. It's a platonic experience. In the sense of you lead your easy daily life, you meet friends, you go to parties, whatever, everything is normal, maybe here and there a wine night stand, but whatever. And then you passionately fall in love. Everything is ruined. The entire balance of your life is lost. Everything is subordinated to this one person. I almost cannot imagine in normal daily life, outside war and so on, a more violent experience than that of love. And I think, which is why all the advisors that we need today uh, are trying precisely to domesticate or to erase this excess of love. It's as if love is too poisonous and then they tell you, you know, the, the trick that they try to offer you, all the marriage agencies, dating agencies, is how to find yourself in love without falling in love. This idea came to me when on one of the transatlantic flights I was in a, I read one of those stupid uh, uh, airline journals, and there was a big text there claiming uh, uh, publicity text claiming we will enable you to be in to find yourself in love without the fall, without this dangerous exposure. And I think this fits perfectly our daily narcissistic metaphysics. You know the old story that I repeat all the time. 
We want coffee without caffeine. We want beer without alcohol. And we want love without its dangerous moment where you get 